Linnaeus got arrested, right? Or he got put in prison because... Because someone probably framed him, I think? Or... Can't quite recall exactly the reason. I think someone framed him, obviously. Probably the Justiciar. Granddaddy. So, um... Let's just get right started right here. Um... I rushed back into my room for a moment to grab the things I found yesterday, shoving them into my pockets. Oh yeah, didn't he find, like... <laughs> he just found the poison that the assassin used just lying out on a fountain, like, in the middle of the courtyard? I didn't, I didn't fully understand how that was a thing. I don't know who these amateur assassins are. With luck, Linnaeus will listen to me, or at least let me show him the scant clues I have. Although a foreboding feeling tells me he'll be in a bad taste. Taste? State. I'm dyslexic. Trying to keep my breathing calm, I follow Arden downstairs through the dark corridors I explored before. The plot holes are so few, huge in this game, everything falls in his lap. So true, like, literally. It, yeah, he just, everything falls in Rivian's lap, or he falls right into the lap of the mastermind, more accurately. And that's probably what's gonna happen after this. You know, we'll, we'll talk to Linnaeus a bit, then, like, the mastermind of this whole thing will knock out Rivian, and then we'll wake up in that dark cellar place. You know, it's just... There's no real investigation. <laughs> uh, we're just playing a dumb game of Scooby-Doo just, just to get kidnapped, and that's how we actually solve the mystery. We exchange no words as we walk, and I grimly brood in my own thoughts as the sound of our footsteps echoes off the walls. The Justiciar looks like Captain Huck. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Linnaeus. I want to help him. Even if I didn't feel anything for him, I'd still believe that he's honest and innocent. I won't stand by and watch him take the fall for something he didn't do. He covered for me the other night, and I'll be damned if I won't repay the p favor. Kidnap and bondage? What? Nasty, chat. Nasty. Finally, we emerge in a dark, grim room and I can barely make out the shape of the iron bars in the distance. I'll let you talk. If you need anything, I'll be outside. I nod my thanks to Arden, who gives me a lingering, hesitant look before stepping back into the hall, closing the door behind him. <laughs> we think we're Velma and we're actually Daphne, so true. Growing tense, I approach the prison cell with determined steps, stopping only when the bars keep me from continuing any further. Linnaeus, are you alright? Uh. Oh, moan a little more, Linnaeus. A shadowy figure slumped against the wall suddenly turns his head towards me. Rivian. Yeah, look at how he's behind those bars. Oh no, my baby. <laughs> Look at my baby! <laughs> you just... <laughs> it looks so funny. <laughs> oh. Um. His voice resonates with disbelief as he stares at me a moment before finally averting his gaze to one side. A little ironic, isn't it? The Inquisitor locked up in a jail cell. It certainly gives me empathy for convicts, that's for certain. Linnaeus, this is serious. We have to get your name cleared as soon as possible. <laughs> he lets out a hollow laugh, the corners of his mouth not so much... not so much as turning upwards. I deserve it, really. Oh no, sad I music. I myself fall into that man's well-placed trap. I suppose that means I'm not so fit to serve as Inquisitor after all. No, 
It's probably because you were too focused on my ass, Linnaeus. It is quite a perky twink ass. You just couldn't pay enough attention to the Justiciar. That bastard. The colorless... Colorless? That's a really weird descriptor. I mean, I guess. The colorless sound of his voice makes anger well up inside me. An anger I didn't know I could feel on another person's behalf. What kind of things are you saying? You were framed. There's no way it could possibly be your fault. I know you're innocent, Linnaeus, and Raphael is trying to bring you down. Ah, oh, you figured it out, have you? It seems I underestimated your powers of observation. Yes, he's been plotting against me from the beginning. Oof, I really like how he shaded us just there. Exhaling a quiet breath, Linnaeus pushes off the wall he was leaning against, taking several steps closer to where I was standing on the other side. Ooh, get closer to the bars, Linnaeus. Let me lick you through them. You can, I'll just pull down my pants and you can fuck me right through it. The haggard look on his features makes my chest feel heavy, and I tightly curl my fingers around the iron separating us. The reason why I didn't believe it at first was... Well... I doubted that he hated me enough to conspire with his worst enemies just so he could make his plan work. I was incorrect. His worst enemies? You don't mean... he's working with the Disciples? <gasps> Gasp! I had no idea. <laughs> Linnaeus grims not. Wait, N Linnaeus grimly nods, pressing his lips together tightly. I get the sense from him that he feels betrayed as much as anything, even if he and Raphael didn't get along before. From my discussion with the butler last night, I gleaned that the guard is an agent of the cult. He's been blackmailing Silas into doing his bidding, but when the butler tried to refuse, the agent decided to eliminate him. What? Silas? Huh? He was helping the bitches? <laughs> Did Silas die? What happened? How'd they try to eliminate him? Silas is being blackmailed? That explains how strange he's been acting. I wonder what they're blackmailing him with. My best assumption is that Silas stole the jewels and the agent poisoned the Duchess. Raphael is the orchestrator, and he was attempting to frame me for one of the crimes. Or both. Um... Hmm. Maybe they have ye old, um... A ye old, uh, porch, nude portrait of Silas that they're blackmailing him with. <laughs> uh, However, my investigation yesterday was all but fruitless. And so I'm left with nothing to defend myself with, save for my words against theirs. As much as the king trusts me, the situation is desperate, and a war could hang in the balance. Rivian's... Mm, moans before every phrase is super annoying. Come on, they're cute! Mmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. I study his resigned expression, wondering how he can possibly give up so easily. Mm. <laughs> I'll stop now. Is it because he feels like both the king and his own cousin stabbed him in the back? Or does he blame himself for being deceived? Does he think that really makes him unfit for his duties, the thing he cares for so much? As those thoughts run through my mind, I grow more and more determined to set Linnaeus free. I'm no inquisitor or investigator, girl. You made that evident. You just, you made that clear in every single route. Or even able to play, even an able player of these treacherous court games, but... You know, Rivian knows how to, like, um... You get with someone actually capable that's actually, you know can handle these, all this intrigue, this political court intrigue, because he can't do it himself. If I inherited anything from my father, it's my stubbornness to never let go. Linnaeus, I found some things yesterday. 
I think they might be evidence that can help you. I reach into my pocket and pull out two sets of keys, as well as the tiny bottle. <sighs> Linnaeus inhales sharply, his eyes going wide. This bottle probably contained the poison that killed the Duchess. It was in the gardens, floating in one of the fountains. <sighs> and these keys! There was an extra copy of both yours and mine lying on the floor in the servants' quarters. If I had to guess, I'd say they belong to whoever put the necklace in my room. And maybe they were thinking about planting it in yours. He intently examines the bottle and keys, picking them up from my hand and bringing them close to his face, narrowing his gaze. It doesn't take him long to return to my palm, however, and he eyes me with a slightly odd expression. When I found the bottle, I met that guard from yesterday, too. From the nervous way he was acting, I think it belongs to him. Which means he really did poison the Duchess. The pieces begin to form a complete picture in my head. I can only hope, however, that it's enough to make the others see the same thing. Rivian, you really... For maybe the first time, he gazes at me with something like true admiration, or perhaps even respect. That's right, bitch. I did it all by myself. <laughs> I'm a big kid, okay? I can handle an investigation. I guess he thought I had decided not to help him with his investigation, or that I'd given up on him, or that I was too stupid to do it, but I showed him. Well, it's a far cry from what someone like Father could have found, but... I just wanted to prove to you that I could be of some use, even though I wasn't expecting it to be under circumstances as dramatic as these. A wry smile curls on my lips. Curls. God, I said curls. What? A wry smile curls on my lips, and I lower my eyes a bit in embarrassment. Two pieces of evidence. Maybe not enough to convince the Lord Chamberlain, but it's damn well worth a try. He suddenly straightens his posture, and a light slowly returns to his steely blue gaze. That light alone is enough to make a warm feeling of relief fill my heart. I think I owe you another apology. Don't get used to it, but... Well, I... For mistreating you. I'm sorry. <laughs> You had to miss a live stream because he kept talking about Camp Buddy. Ooh. Man, hope you've learned your lesson. This is a Camp Buddy free zone. <laughs> uh. Oh, he did the moan again. His sudden guilty murmur catches me completely off guard. I was under the misguided impression that you were only interested in me due to my position. Or perhaps that you'd taken pity on me for being removed from my own investigation. You thought he was we were only interested in him because he's the Inquisitor? Honey, I don't care if you were a bum on the side of the road. I love it when you talk dirty to me, and by that I mean when you insult me and degrade me. That's why I thought I should focus on unraveling this affair, rather than letting myself grow attached to someone who likely had only a passing interest in me. And I didn't consider that you'd really take what I said seriously. I take everything that you say seriously. He clasped his hands on top my own around the bars, biting his lower lip. His skin is surprisingly warm as he tightly squeezes my fingers, gazing down at me with a small, self-deprecating smile. It probably seems like I'm opening up to you rather fast, just so that you'll help defend me against those accusations. Well, make no mistake. It's easy for a damsel in distress to fall in love with a knight in shining armor. Wow, that's a, quite the compliment you're giving to 
to to to to, to the fem femboy Rivy in there. Wow, good for you, Riv. But you've been worming your way into my heart ever since we first traded quips back in the main hall. I've been wondering how much Varison would hate me for spiriting away his son, but if I get out of here, I think I'm willing to face those consequences. Damn it! Why does such a confession make me so painfully happy? I didn't know how much I wanted to hear it until just now. How can mere words have such an impact on me? I suppose the both of us need to work on our courtship skills, hmm? Well, after you're freed, I'd like to stay by your side even when the celebration's over, if we can keep tolerating each other. Tolerate over me all night, Linnaeus. I lean in, standing on my toes to try and close the distance between our faces. He presses forward in response. Angling his head and teasing, and a teasing smirk gently crosses his features. Indeed. I think I could learn to tolerate you. As long as you promise not to run away. I won't run away, so please, tolerate all over my face. Oh, I promise. You won't be able to get rid of me, in fact. <laughs> like some kind of disease, are you? Well, I think I'll be perfectly fine without a cure. Um, I haven't played the 8-bit game in a while. <gasps> oh my. Oh god. Soak it in. Beautiful. God, it's so. They really got their mouths open. They really want to taste each other. Our lips warmly crush together, and the heat of his skin more than compensates for the frigid touch of the iron bars. He kisses me far more feverishly than last night, immediately pulling me back every time I try to catch a breath. Seeing such passion from him is somehow invigorating. And the excitement of getting another glimpse of the real warmth beneath his cool exterior is enough to make my heart race. Looks like a snake eating a rat? Damn. Rivian unhinged his jaw. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh, it's eating him like a snack? Every passing moment causes my chest to ache more and more. I only want to embrace him, to get him out of this damn cell and into my arms. His tongue slips into my mouth, pressing forward impatiently, and I let it tangle with my own. Soft, wet noise ew, echo around us as our kiss deepens, and our tongues slip and curl against each other. Even though my eyes are closed, I can hear a faint rattle as Linnaeus' fingers tightly clench the iron bars in frustration, and then he sent and I sense he wants to hold me as much as I want to hold him. Ugh, look at these heat bubbles. <laughs> he traces my lips with his tongue, exploring the corners of my mouth almost worship of worshipfully? Alright. Okay. That's how you want to describe it. You know, it's... yeah. What's the drool on the cheek? Honey, this is the best meal Rivian's had in, in all day. A shiver drives its way down my spine and I dig my nails against the cold iron to try and keep my grounding. It's so strange how things happen like this. How someone who thinks they're forever separated from other people or unable to connect with any of them, can find a familiar soul in such a chance meeting. I've read a few romance novels in my time, but never did I wish for those events to happen to me. 
If his big ol' head can kiss Rivian like that, he can slip through the bars? Um, maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh. They were always too dramatic, too painful, and even if there was a happy ending, I knew that it would inevitably be cut short one day. But here I am, completely infatuated with someone else, before my mind even had a chance to ask my heart what the hell it was doing. What foolishness. There's no going back now, though. Even if there was, I've already set this course for myself, and I'm determined to see it through to the end. When our lips finally part, my chest heaves as I take in deep breaths, even though I'd rather deprive my lungs for a little longer. I should go. Maybe there's something else I can find before you call before the Chamberlain. Although I'm thoroughly reluctant to leave Linnaeus, I have to focus on the long-term goal at hand. We gotta get this skinny bitch's ass out of prison. While I'm no expert in this romance business, I think it's bad form to prioritize kissing over the risk of permanent imprisonment or worse. You're right. See if you can find a way into the Duchess's room. Ask Arden for his help, even. There's a chance. A clue that Raphael hasn't noticed is still there. You wish Rivian could have been let in the cell so their kiss could have been more erotic. Honey, wasn't that kiss already erotic? Rivian just tried to eat Linnaeus. What? He just tried to have the boy for dinner. Like, what? How more? How, how could you get more erotic for that? I don't know how. Also, what is Linnaeus talking about? A clue Raphael hasn't noticed? Oh, you mean a clue Raphael hasn't, like, hit away. Okay, I see what he's saying. For a second I thought, like, a clue that he just hasn't found yet to solve the case, and I was like, you said he's working with the disciples. But no, he just... Yeah, because Raphael's probably covering for them and cleaning up the evidence. But if he is cleaning up the evidence, he's doing a god-awful job of it, because who left the poison on that fountain? Was it Raphael? I don't know. I don't know. He gently strokes a fingertip down my cheek, studying me with an encouraging glimmer visible behind his glasses. We still have a date tonight, you know. If you make me late for it, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> As if I'd be so callous. Have a little more faith in me, Inquisitor. You keep forgetting Linnaeus's name? You thought it was Phineas? Hun? No. He's a good boy. You, for, you remember his name. Mustering up the most confident smile I have to offer, I flick a finger against Linnaeus's dark ponytail before taking a step back, forcing myself away from the bars. I'll see you soon. Don't go anywhere now. Ah, and here I was, just considering having a stroll around the gardens. That wry, mischievous smirk lingers in the back of my mind as I leave the cells, returning to the hall. Sure enough, Arden is still waiting outside. I explain to him the circumstances briefly, and he catches on quicker than I expected. When I ask if there's any way for me to access the Duchess's room, he nods firmly and starts to lead me back upstairs. Good old Arden. <laughs> I don't know if he's doing it for me or Linnaeus, but he comes through either way. Man, what a cuck. After we reach the door of our destination, Arden has a few words with the guard outside who seems to know. And though what feels and through what feels like a miracle, I finally have access to the scene of the murder. Anything that can possibly help prove Linnaeus's innocence. When nothing shows up, however, I let out a frustrated sigh and slump against the window, scowling out at the lovely vista below. Mm -hmm. This room, it's right above the gardens. In fact, I can clearly see where I was standing last night, 
including the fountain that I found the bottle in. My hand drifts to my pocket. What, he just threw it? Someone just threw it out the window and into the fountain? Is it possible the bottle was thrown from this window? If it was supposed to be destroyed, but by some strange twist of fate, landed in the fountain. Honey, that fountain was tiny. Like, that's a three-pointer right there. <laughs> that was one tiny-ass fountain. It was a bird bath, is what it was. It seems like a bizarre circumstance, but considering how damn bizarre this whole celebration's gotten, I'm willing to believe just about anything could happen. <gasps> Riv! Yeah. Arden's excited voice calls me back to the moment, and I turn from the window. Arden, what are you doing down there? I'm greeted by the sight of Arden on his stomach, his head underneath the bed frame. There's something under here! It looks like... parchment? You're telling me the Justiciar was too stupid to look under the bed? It's probably just the Duchess's shopping list to give to her servants or something. Come on, you're going to get your knees all dirty. We haven't even looked at it yet, Riv. You can find any piece of evidence in here and you'll just be like, eh, it's probably just the Duchess's bullshit. Like, stupid? That's not how you do an investigation, you stupid? Dumbass? Arden crawls back, holding a piece of paper in his mouth like some kind of pooch, fetching a stick. He plucks it from his lips and quickly unfolds it, scanning over its contents eagerly while on his knees. Not wanting to get my hopes up for anything beyond the useless scrap of parchment. After you're done, meet me in my room. We must capture him before he sees through us. Huh. Orders from someone, maybe? As the words Arden reads register in my brain, I reach to his side, peering at the paper in his hands. Just as he said, it seems to be a torn off piece of instructions. Moreover, that flowery script looks incredibly familiar. If I'm not mistaken, this might be the last piece of the puzzle I need. Is it enough to help me free Linnaeus? Not necessarily. But it gives me a fighting chance. The rest is up to the gods and my own questionable skills of persuasion. Arden, you're a genius! There'll be a raise coming your way soon, I'm sure. I ruffle his hair enthusiastically. He blinks in surprise and then flushes slightly, offering an embarrassed chuckle. I'm not quite sure what you're planning, Riv. But it sounds like you're confident about it. He hands me the piece of paper and I grimace slightly. Confident is a strong word. But I'm going to give it everything I've got. We exchange glances and Arden gives me a soft nod that seems to imply his faith in me. Sir Arden, Sir Rivian, the Inquisitor's hearing is about to begin. A guard sticks his head into the Duchess's room to notify us. That was Arden's, the guard Arden knew? You think he'd done any favors for this old guard? I bet he has. I bet that's what they get up to in training, guard training. Nasty. Arden and I hurry out into the hall, making haste towards the meeting chamber on the ground floor. Outside the door, I pull aside one of the attendants and give him the various pieces of evidence I've collected, instructing him to bring them forward when I ask. I figure it'll make it seem more authentic or reliable than if I just pulled them out conveniently from my pocket. <sighs> Alright. Let's do this. I don't think I've ever felt this tense before, not even when I was almost forbidden from sweets for a week as a child. When I walk into my meeting, into the meeting room, I suddenly get the sense that I'm very far in over my head. 
There are several older men and women also heading inside, and I recognize a few of them as important figures in the king's most elite circle. I assume that they, along with the Chamberlain, will be the ones deciding Linnaeus' ultimate fate. Well, no pressure or anything. Only a man's life on the line. Just a regular day of work. I steal my nerves as much as possible as I search the room for Linnaeus, who I soon spot sitting quietly on a nearby chair. Two guards on either side of him, but they don't appear to be actively monitoring him. It's probably very awkward to have to do such a thing to your superior. Heading over quickly, I take a seat beside Linnaeus, trying to think of what proper... of what the proper words to say are. When he turns to gaze at my face, I expect to see anxiety or discomfort in his features, but... Somehow he seems very calm. How can you possibly control your nerves? All these dusty old dodits glaring at you like you've just insulted their wigs. Linnaeus lets out a quiet snort, pushing up his glasses with a finger and shaking his head slightly. Showing nervousness would be like admitting to my own guilt. They are piranhas, Rivian, and I don't care to feed them. Besides, with you here, what do I have to be nervous about? You're a practiced expert at this sort of thing, are you not? <gasps> Oh, such sarcasm. <laughs> Even though I know he's teasing, my stomach is clenched into such a big, tight knot that I feel like I might be sick from anxiety. I added in the word big even though it wasn't there. Maybe just because I'm thinking about big knots and how tight they can be when they're inside you. I don't know. Falling silent to try and seem well composed, I watch the rest of the small group file into the room and seat themselves. Yeah, who's this? Who is this, Grandpa? The Chamberlain? At the head of the table is the Grand Chamberlain, a middle-aged and very severe-looking man whose knife-like gaze rivals even Linnaeus' own. I also spot Silas sitting not far away, as well as that boy from the other day. Alistair! Was it? I wonder what they're doing here. I have a feeling it won't be anything to help out our case, though. Finally, only one chair remains empty. The door swings open for what's presumably the last guest, and my eyes immediately flick up to see who it is. Uh, Raphael. Wearing his usual confident, smug expression, the Justicier tips his hat to the Chamberlain before striding up to his chair, settling down in it with a flutter of his cloak. I can tell from the slight sneer like curl of the Chamberlain's lip that he doesn't care much for Raphael. Of course, the few times he's glanced over in our direction, he had a fairly similar expression, so I didn't think he particularly likes Linnaeus either. Y'all vomiting at it, said Raphael? Like, same. Why can't everyone just get along? Okay. Uh. If the advisors, the Justicia, and the Grand Inquisitor are ready, we will begin our expedited hearing for the purported crimes of Linnaeus Glaucia. Okay, first of all, you red-eyed, vampire-ass-looking motherfucker, take off that damn stupid-ass hat. I don't know who the fuck you think you are. You come to this courtroom looking like a damn... Stupid ass 1800s vampire. Uh uh. No, mm mm. No. And yeah, his voice too. That was not. Mm mm. Mm mm. Does not even fit what I don't. Does not even fit what I'm looking at. A hush falls over the room as soon as the Grand Chamberlain speaks. The Justicia has made a grave accusation against the Grand Inquisitor Linnaeus for the crime of stealing the deceased Duchess's prize diamonds as well as causing her death through the poisoning of her drink. 
Oh, I'm sorry. He sounds a little bit bored. Chamberlain, you don't have to be here if you don't want to. Just leave. He sounds so bored. <laughs> Today, the Justicia go. has several witnesses he has brought before us, while the Inquisitor has chosen to bring a single witness, Rivian Varison. Barely audible murmurs course among the gathered nobility for a moment, and I feel a plethora of surprise, curious stares directed our way. Justicia, if you would care to present your claims, as well as substantiate them for the gathered advisors. Don't smile, Raphael. He nods rigidly at Raphael, he responds by beaming widely and rising up from his seat without a moment's hesitation. Raphael's eyes drift from the Chamberlain to Linnaeus, and then to me, briefly narrowing. I glare back at him, trying to convey that we're on to his schemes, and I'll completely and thoroughly undo them and clear Linnaeus' name. That's a lot to convey, with a glare. And also, that I think he's a complete cock. Well... My thanks, gracious Chamberlain! Now, I believe all of the wise advisors gathered here are well aware of the circumstances surrounding the beloved Duchess's death, yes? I shall explain what exactly occurred on that dark, fateful night. Oh, here we go. You should have brought some of those sweets you're so fond of, so that we might have some refreshments during this painful performance. <laughs> Linnaeus mutters under his breath to me, his known nose wrinkling in disgust, although his eyes remain fi keenly fixed on Raphael. While the Duchess attended dinner, her room was empty and locked. However, there is one servant in this castle with keys to all of the guest rooms. And aware of that fact, Sir Linnaeus engaged his assistants. <sighs> when Raphael indirectly mentions him, Silas stiffens. The painful expression on his face speaks volumes, and yet he remains silent. After requesting the spare key to the Duchess's room under the pretext of delivering a special note from the King, the Inquisitor entered the Duchess's chambers and took the incredibly valuable jewels laying therein. Why? Why would Linnaeus take the jewels? Not wishing for his theft to be discovered, however, and instead desiring to frame it as an act of sabotage by the infamous disciples of Ignatius, he slipped poison into the glass of water atop the Duchess's dresser. But why? Why would Linnaeus take the jewels? Honey, you're not even trying here. You're, f you're flopping like a fish up there, you're dying. Why does Linnaeus need jewels? You think he's he's not hard up for cash, I don't think? What? Why does he need jewels? You think he got nothing else better going on than to commit petty theft? What? What what is his case? <clears throat> did he did he spend did he was was he awake all night planning up this speech? Did he stay up into the wee hours of the morning? What? This is awful. This is unbelievable. Raphael's portraying the cult as the framed party? What's next? He's going to tell us that Linnaeus eats babies? It wasn't until we began searching rooms that the Inquisitor panicked and fabricated a story of how he found the Duchess's jewels rather than admitting his act of larceny, knowing that he couldn't hide the necklace during our investigation. Slightly louder murmurs of disbelief and shock start to drift among the gathered nobles, but as much as I see doubt in a number of their faces, I also notice accusing looks. I have the testimony of the servant, Silas, as well as the bystander, Alistair, who witnessed the Inquisitor's shifty behavior. And of course, the words of my own guardsmen as they were present during Selenaeus' attempt to cover up the situation. 
He gestures towards Silas and Alistair, along with a few men in armor standing beside them. Ugh, this doesn't look good. Even though there's no hard evidence, the word of several people against one is difficult to counter. Acting too rashly or unthinkingly will only give credence to Raphael's lies. We will hear the servant's testimony first, then, in support of your accusations. Please state your name, servant. Take off your fucking fruity-ass hat. Dork. Silas rises immediately when the Chamberlain gestures towards him. Although his speeches are relatively calm, a thin sheen of sweat glimmers on his brow. I am called Silas, Sir Chamberlain. I can corroborate the Justicia's story. I was asked for the key to the Duchess's room that night, and as a servant, I thought it best to obey my superior. He's certainly lying. Someone probably asked him for the key. That guard, I imagine. But it wasn't Linnaeus. I retrieved the key I needed from my set of spares in the servants' quarters, which I'd never use save for the rarest of occasions. I brought it to the Inquisitor's office and promptly returned to the main hall. He bows his head, grimacing somewhat. Bitch, stop lying! Silas! It's hard for me to feel angry at him knowing that he's likely still being blackmailed by Raphael. Just let him release your nude portrait, no one cares. No one cares he got a micro penis. But his testimony is enough to sway the amount of suspicion drifting among the gathered advisors who whisper among themselves as they glance between Linnaeus and Silas. I should say something here, but what point should I bring up? Um, let's see. Nope, it's the keys. I looked at the guide and it's the keys. Uh, yes. Where's my mouse? Damn it. What the heck? What the? Sorry about you, gal, yo! What? <laughs> like, what's happening here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> huh? Riv Rivian, or should I say Makoto Nagi? Yes! Yeah, go do it, honey! Come on, let's do this! Are we- I'm- are we ready for a scrum debate? I'm ready for one! A non-stop debate? Bring it on! Come on! I'll cut your lies to pieces, bitch! My fingers curl into fists as I push myself up from my chair, turning the most effective glare I can manage on Silas. Inwardly, of course, I'm apologizing for looking at him so sternly. This is the right moment. I feel it in my very core. God, I was gonna make the kiss the thumbnail to this video, but... Uh, like, some part of me says that this has to be the thumbnail now. <laughs> I don't know. This is just so- this is moment. This moment's too powerful. I mean, it's just- uh, This- Okay. It's time to strike the first blow into Raphael's shaky story. If you would present the keys I turned in earlier, please. <sighs> I call out to one of the nearby attendants who nods and motions for the keys to be placed on the table. The advisors all peer curiously at the glimmering objects, murmurs of confusion wisping around. Now, you said that you almost never used the spare keys to the guest rooms, did you not, Silas? Why is the lower portion of his face so big? You mean his chin? That's just how his chin be, just accept it. <laughs> Look, the text box is cutting off some of the chin, so he almost looks normal. So just stop stop paying attention to it. Uh, that is correct, sir. Anyway, guys, pay attention to this to this bait, okay? Cuz this is we're going to have to <laughs> we're going to have to, you know, 
select the right ammunition for this to to um shoot down their lies. Silas replies a little uncomfortably, his eyebrows knitting together as he nods at me. Then perhaps you'd care to explain why I found the spare keys to my room and Linnaeus's lying on the ground in the servants' quarters yesterday. <gasps> Ooh, bitch, we got him! As my tone sharpens, Silas lowers his gaze, biting his lowered lip for a moment. Ah, they must have fallen while I was retrieving the Duchess's key, sir. Sensing an opening, I keep pressing forward, unwilling to back down at this crucial point. Isn't that a little bit of a oh. coincidence? Considering that I found the Duchess's necklace in my room, right after I passed you in the hallway near my door. Perhaps you intended to plant the necklace inside the Inquisitor's room, but losing your nerve or intending to involve me in the case, you placed it in my own chambers instead. Damn. Ugh. The murmurs quickly escalate to louder... To louder? Oh yes. To louder gasps as the advisors look between Silas and me, and the Grand Chamberlain's expression twists into a scowl. <laughs> he wasn't expecting that one. Well played. God, we really are just like Makoto and Linnaeus is Kirigiri out here. We're like doing all the work and it's just like, ugh. Linnaeus' smug murmur comes out from beside me. And he encouragingly nudges my leg underneath the table. What is the meaning of this? I thought we had established that the jewels were found in the Inquisitor's chambers. Not initially, sir. I found them in my room and brought them to Linnaeus, not wanting to seem like a guilty party. And I can assure you I didn't steal them. I have an alibi for the whole evening. Uh, what? baseless conjecture are you devising exactly? Oh god. Alright, I'll make this the thumbnail, I think. Yeah. Alright. Raphael cuts in, rising from his seat again to glower at me accusingly. A feeling of elation bubbles up in my chest at his irritated expression, which gives me enough encouragement to keep going. Only the same as your witness, Justicia. He has no proof that he gave Linnaeus the key, but there is proof that he wanted access to our rooms that night. You're sorry you're late? Well, you're here now, and that's what's important. <clears throat> he stares at me a moment longer, but soon waves a dismissive hand, huffing and fluttering his cloak. The servant stands by his testimony, Grand Chamberlain. I implore you to ignore the unfounded mutterings of the Inquisitor's so-called witness. So-called? I swear if only I could pluck that bloody feather from his cap and shove it up his... I see. Very interesting. Such conflicting words suggest that one of you is lying, which is a matter that shall have to be investigated later. Later? What are we here for? Are we here just so we can say we did the court we did the court thing and we'll actually solve the case later? Like what's wrong with you? That's what we're here for, dumbass. I can't help but shiver a little when the Grand Chamberlain turns his frigid, threatening gaze from Silas to me. I have to remind myself that I'm not that if that I'm not the guilty party here. Stand straight, Vivian. Taking both statements into account, then let us proceed to the Justicia's next witness. Oh my god, you think he looks like the Colonel? <laughs> You're a maniac. Ugh, oh, get Alistair off the stage. Come on, get him out of here. Raphael motions for Alistair to rise, and the boy manages to lift himself up from his sheet, 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 seat, on shaky looking legs. I wonder how or why he's testifying. Is it possible Raphael is threatening or using him too? Considering how weak willed he seems, along with the fact that Celeste was also dragging him around like yesterday like a wet rag. I'd gather that it's pretty easy to coerce him into just about anything. The 
bystander who observed the Inquisitor by the Duchess's room. Uh, Alistair, correct? Please recount what you saw on the night in question. Y y yes Grand Chamberlain. Ah, he's faking again. Oh, excellent. How am I supposed to refute what he says if I can't even understand what he's saying? Alistair swallows, grasping at his clothing with trembling figure fingers. His face is so pale that he looks like he might pass out at any moment. Maybe someone should get him a glass of water. I, I was returning to my r r room, which is near the d d duchess's. When I saw the Inquisitor l leaving her chambers. Judging from the way the Chamberlain's face scrunches up impatiently at Alistair's manner of speaking, he's having a rough time understanding him too. He had s something in his hand. It l l looked like a, b a bottle. A bottle? Could you see the contents of this bottle? At the Chamberlain's question, Alistair's eyes start briefly over to Raphael. The Justicia only stares impassively back at him, raising one eyebrow. I think it was p, -p, -p powder Maybe... p, -p, -p poison p p p p p p p p poison Fucking... Uh... And no one out here is buying that acting. Come on. Get off the stage. Boo, motherfucker. Boo. How about I stick my p, -p, 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 p penis in your fucking mouth? Maybe that'll help you stop stuttering, bitch. The mention of poison causes an immediate stir, and I see distraught, questioning looks on the advisor's faces. Well, obviously this is another complete lie. Time to set about unraveling it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oof. Rising to my feet once more, I motion to the attendant again. The bottle, if you please. Nodding, the man produces the tiny glass container and places it gently on the table. Alistair's expression glow grows even more anxious as he stares at the bottle for a long moment before his eyes shift over to Raphael worriedly. Sir Rivian, have you collected every piece of evidence associated with this matter? At the Chamberlain's... As the Chamberlain's voice rises in disbelief, it takes all my willpower to hold back a smirk. After the Inquisitor was removed from the investigation of the Duchess's murder, he expressed concern that foul work was at play. Of course, following in the footsteps of my father, I saw fit to conduct my own investigation on the side. Yes, do it, do it, uh, Rivian Nagy, or Rivian Makoto, or what's, I don't even know. The footsteps of your father, eh? I see how it is, Farrison. As Linnaeus casts me a playful glance, a few intrigued whispers spring up from several of the nobles nearby. His father, the old strategist, right? Oh, what a brilliant man he was, as his son stepped into his shoes. You sound like a kitty diddler. Get out of here. I never thought I'd see the day where I felt proud about using my father's name, but here I am. It may not be my main motivator in what I did, but perhaps it was a subconscious factor, and most importantly, the Verison name gives me a little credence among this fickle crowd. I see. We do not condone such activities by individuals unauthorized by the king, though I suppose in these unusual circumstances, certain exceptions can be made. Can we just talk about his pew beard? I hate it. Alright, I'm glad we had this talk. Grand Chamberlain, it's very possible he is fabricating the evidence or, or somehow working with the Inquisitor to... He sounds like a goblin. Raphael is starting to sound like a goblin. Silence, Justicia. I will hear all available information before jumping to such rash conclusions. 
Beyond that, his father is a respectable man, and I am doubtful his son would engage in such unlawful activity. <clears throat> Raphael silently grits his teeth, adjusting his hat to hide his distasteful expression. Uh, however, Sir Rivian, what is your purpose in showing us this bottle? If we are to assume it is the same one that held the poison, how does it serve to contradict what the Justicia's witness has said? The room falls deathly silent as I race to come up with the best reply I can manage. Um. Ooh! Uh, thank God I have the guide! The bottle's location. Yep, I, well, I would have guessed that one anyway. Yes, I would have. I would like to point out to those gathered that I found this bottle outside in the castle gardens, floating in one of the fountains. I pick up the bottle and hold it up to the light, making sure that it can be seen clearly. There is a crack in it that suggests it was roughly handled, or perhaps thrown out of the window of the Duchess's room which directly overlooks the gardens in an attempt to destroy the evidence. Alistair blinks at my confident words, tilting his head to the side with a puzzled expression. That is certainly a possibility, yes. Uh, how is this related to the Inquisitor? Setting the bottle back down, I tightly grip the edge of the table, turning my gaze from Alistair to the guards behind him. If Linnaeus left the Duchess's chambers with the bottle, why would I find it outside? He couldn't have thrown it out the window, nor would he need to, since he could dispose of it in a much safer fashion. Instead, does this not strike you as something that would be done in the heat of the moment? Say, by someone who was inside the Duchess's room, but not alone? <clears throat> Although I've been relying mostly on guesswork up to this point, Raphael's sudden low growl makes me think I'm on the right track. Sir Rivian, just what are you implying? It seems like you clearly suspect someone besides the Inquisitor is at fault for this matter. I'll tell you who's at fault for this matter. Fucking Grandpa. Taking a deep breath, I slam my hands down on the table. Then I point a finger at the guard closest to Raphael. Well, him too. But mostly Raphael. I've never seen his face before, obviously. But he's noticeably taller and bulkier than the other guards, so I'd remember his stature anywhere. Why don't you take off your helmet and see if any of the other guardsmen recognize you? This stupid ass guard that wasn't even an official guard at the fucking estate, manor, wherever we are, literally came to this court case when this could have happened. Why didn't just why didn't you why did you come? Why did you come? You stupid ass. My abrupt accusation elicits a number of curious gasps and glances, which I forcibly ignore to try and keep my concentration. Oh, this all seems like it has escalated very strangely, but kindly oblige Sir Rivian's request, guardsman, to keep things moving. You... He growls underneath his helmet, but I notice Raphael kicks his ankle subtly. Finally, the man grabs his helmet and slowly pulls it off, revealing sharp, rugged features marked by several gashes and scars. Huh? It couldn't I've be. I've never seen him before. No. I thought he was Galen all this time. What in God's name? Several of the other guards, presumably the ones under Raphael's command, audibly murmur in surprise. This is it, Rivian. This is your big chance. This is my big break. <laughs> I'm gonna make it as a pros a public prosecutor. Here I go. Everyone take a moment, please, and recall what happened after the unconscious Duchess was escorted to her room by several guards. She was given a glass of water that was already on her table, 
and in those few moments, one of the guards slipped a powdered poison into the glass when no one else was looking. To dispose of the only evidence, the bottle of poison, he dropped it from the window, assuming it would break outside. Although he remained silent, I feel Aeneas squeezing my knee reassuringly under the table. Then I notice that he slides his hand further towards my zipper and undoes it. He he notices that I'm starting to grow under his touch and he... <laughs> uh, I can tell from the faces of just about everyone in the room, including the Grand Chamberlain, that my theory at least holds a little weight. If it's enough to cast out, that's all I need. No, Kuro? No, what? <laughs> Couldn't they look at the fingerprints on the bottle? This ain't CSI Miami, stupid ass motherfucker. This is fucking 1800s or 1700s. If it's enough to cast doubt, that's all I need. As for the one who pulled the strings behind all of this, and attempted to frame the Inquisitor in the process, it's none other than our beloved Justicia, Raphael. The culprit must be you, Raphael. <laughs> Ugh. Damn, Kuro, okay. Well, sorry, hon, just had to lay down some logic on you. Raphael stares at me wordlessly as his eyes narrow into slits. I can't help but think how ironic it is, considering how much he attached himself to me last night. In the end, he probably sees me as just another thing to try and take away, take away from Linnaeus. Well, that's... Quite the accusation, Sir Rivian. However, we cannot give credence to such an argument without substantial evidence to accompany your words. It's time for the final blow. This is it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really can't mess up this one. If I do, it'll be all over. Repeating those words inside my head, I nod to the attendant who pulls out the last thing I gave him today. A small note, one with a few damning words. Rivian. Don't worry, baby. I'm gonna get us out of this. A shocked whisper comes from beside me, but I resist the urge to look down at Linnaeus, instead focusing my gaze intently on the Chamberlain. Shall I read for you this note that I found in the Duchess's room, lost beneath her dresser? If you would be so kind, yes. The Chamberlain watches me with interest, his severe expression tempered somewhat by curiosity. It says, After you're done, meet me in my room. We must capture him before he sees through us. Silence! Raphael suddenly roars, and just like that, everyone goes quiet. Oh, this is just like in Danganronpa when the culprit gets really pissed when you fucking unveil all his crimes. The briefly enraged look in his eyes is gone as quickly as it came, however, is replaced with a chilly, unamused stare. This disgrace has gone on long enough to bring something that could be so easily forged into this room and attempt to pass it off as the truth. It is shameful. And you are dishonoring us with your very presence. His voice lacked its normal, th normal the, the, theater, theatrically, theatrically, no theatricality, theatric, theatricality. I've never seen the word used with that in that way. His voice lacked its normal theatricality and instead sounds so harsh that I shrink back slightly. I feel every pair of eyes in the room turning from Raphael to me, and the weight of what I'm doing sets in. Why would he tell people to be quiet when Rivian's the only one talking? Well, that's why he wanted to be quiet. I'm char charging the man who's supposed to be the hand of justice, of our law, with murder and conspiracy. Well, he did the same thing to the Inquisitor, who was justice. 
I can barely believe it myself that such a thing could ever be possible. If Raphael is corrupt, how many others who I've trusted are the same way? How much of our kingdom is as safe as I always thought it was? What's this? We're having a little breakdown? But if I had to choose just one thing to believe in, I believe in Linnaeus. Oh, that thin, tall soy boy. It would be Linnaeus. And since I believe Linnaeus is innocent, then Raphael can't possibly be speaking a word of truth. There has to be some way to sway things over to my side, even if just a little bit. Ooh! The final piece of evidence, the killing blow.